Good morning. Over the past eight months, Western governments have embarked on a series of programmes involving a level of social and economic suppression, which is no precedent in modern history. In the case of Ireland, small businesses have been closed down, normal human interactions have been banned, the worship of God has been prohibited, and the right to freedom of assembly closed off. There is no evidence that these measures have any significant impact on preventing the spread of COVID-19 virus, which has proven far less dangerous than originally thought. The incidence rates we are given are unreliable, as are death and hospitalisation rates, and a climate of fear has been engendered in the population. This is destroying the service economy, causing a huge increase in national debt, creating a crisis of mental health and national morale, and disrupting the proper functioning of our hospitals and of our society. Any moderately clever or well-educated Martian who landed on our planet would have to ask, are these people engaged in an episode of mass hysteria? Have they been afflicted by a very singular type of madness? I think rather than concluding that all the members of the government have suddenly become subject to a type of mad cow disease, which probably isn't the case, we would be better to look at the structures of government which we operate, and to ask whether the modern state has in fact become incapable of dealing with a significant crisis in a rational fashion. I want to suggest three reasons why I think our government has proven itself incapable of dealing properly with the current crisis. The first is the lack of proportionality. Proportionality refers to the ability to put things in the correct relationship to one another. The old expression, his heart is in the right place, refers to someone whose heart is in the right relationship to the rest of his faculties, someone who is compassionate but still rational. There is no shortage of examples of recent government decisions which show an absence of a sense of proportion. One may speak of a welfare system which has destroyed the primary and the oldest system of welfare, namely the institution of the human family, leaving untold misery in its wake. Or of a climate policy which is systematically wrecking rural and industrial economies with little discernible benefit. The most obvious recent example is the response to the pandemic, the sheer lunacy of destroying the lives of millions of people in order to fight an enemy which is at most a very limited threat. <coughs> These examples all have one thing in common. The decision to place one value above every other. I believe this is often done by politicians who fear being accused of not being sufficiently caring. While of course this can be a valid criticism, it leaves out the question of whether or not we care about the suffering caused to others as a result of our actions in solving the first problem. Why is it that so often the cure becomes worse than the, than the disease, often hugely so? This tendency has infiltrated the culture at large, whereby virtue signaling in regard to one value is taken to trump all others. However, the role of leaders in a society is to lead, not to respond to popular hysteria. By and large, I believe that people will respond to leadership and in the long term will reward those who exercise it. The second reason relates to a morbid fear of making tough decisions. This has had the effect of causing government to delegate decision making to state bodies, committees of experts, in order to take the heat off themselves. In Ireland, this has seen the whole process of government that has been handed over to a public health body. However, there is a huge difficulty in delegating responsibilities to organisations such as this. The first is that they are totally unsuited to making decisions, which have an effect beyond their immediate areas of expertise. The second, and I know this from having worked with one of these bodies, is their tendency to make the most conservative possible decision, regardless of verifications. Such bodies are notoriously risk averse, largely for fear of public criticism. They therefore operate to an inherently defective decision-making model. Remember, the organ of the state will defend the interests of the state, but not necessarily the interests of the people. Such bodies are given too much deference by politicians. Their role should never be more than that of simply offering advice. The third reason for our malaise is that of outrage culture. So many people nowadays go about their day looking for something to be outraged about. Our media revolves around the generation of anger. In the words of Orwell, seeking to whip the pros into one of their periodic outbursts of fury. Nor should we underestimate the role of big tech and social media in this process. <clears throat> it is becoming increasingly clear that the manner in which algorithms are directed to individuals and groups has the potential for mass psychological manipulation. None of the tech giants actually deny this, but its potential to interfere with the proper function of democratic decision making becomes very obvious. If large numbers of people are manipulated in certain directions, then clearly the ability of politicians to govern in a balanced and ethical fashion would be hampered. <clears throat> Legislation has not kept pace with the power of social media, and it is of course a very dangerous thing for government to try to take control of such media. 
However, it is necessary to the proper functioning of democracy that the information available to the public be freely accessible and unbiased. <coughs> I'll go so far as to say that if the related threats of media bias and corporate manipulation of information are not faced up to, we can say goodbye to democracy. The outrage culture of which I spoke has clearly set its sights on attacking freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Without these, no democracy can prevail. The Irish Freedom Party places freedom as its principal value. Without freedom, there can be no democracy and therefore no legitimate government. It's time for us to drain the swamp of our often unaccountable administrative system and those who manipulate public information. Everyone in our society is aware of the level of social repression introduced by what we call political correctness. What has become clear from the reckless response to the pandemic is that this type of decision making has the potential to do lasting damage to our society. It is time for us to rise up as a people and to refuse to accept that effective model of government decision making and media driven hysteria are being allowed to take the place of proper representative government. The Irish Freedom Party is one of the fastest growing parties in Ireland at present. One of our first priorities if elected would be to carry out a root and branch reform of how government decisions are made. And that must involve a careful examination of the many quangos that have been allowed to develop and the destructive influence that they can have. We must above all ensure freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and effective opposition in order to scrutinise government decisions. The old days of, of adopting a broad media driven consensus to determine matters of vital national concern must come to an end. Our party is now the only party that, are, that offers you a real alternative to the left or drift of Irish politics. Parties of the extreme left seeking a revolutionary and destructive transformation of our society now constitute one of the principal parties of government, as well as the main opposition party. Should they ever achieve full power, you can say goodbye to your basic freedoms, your right to safely and securely own property or to worship God or to express free opinions, your right to free and fair elections and your right to hold government to account. The Corona era has shown us that the present parties of government cannot be trusted to act in our interest. We need change. We need to shake up our system. This has been Michael Leahy asking for your support for the Irish Freedom Party.